In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Scotty Smart Handle in extensible virtual range pull mode. I'm going to show you every step from Bluetooth pairing your Scotty receiver through capturing a point in ArcGIS field maps. If you're already familiar with some of these steps, you can use the chapter labels below or in the video description to skip ahead. The first thing I'm going to do is Bluetooth pair my Scotty GNSS receiver to my smartphone. Today, I'm using iOS. I'm gonna launch my phone settings and navigate to the Bluetooth settings. Making sure that my Bluetooth settings are toggled on, I'm going to look for my Scotty GNSS receiver. I see it under other devices, so I'm going to select it. Now we're connected. The next thing I'm going to do is launch EOS Tools Pro and configure a couple of key settings here. The first one is that I want to be using orthometric height instead of ellipsoidal height. So I'm going to click my, my EOS Tools Pro settings icon in the top right corner, and I'm going to scroll down until I see altitude reference. I'm going to select that setting, and you see how it's automatically toggled to ellipsoidal height? I'm going to select orthometric height, and it's going to ask me to select my country and my geoid model. I'm in the US, it seems to already remember that, so I'm going to select the GOID 12B model. If you're not sure which model to select, contact your GIS administrator. If your country isn't shown or your GOID model isn't shown, contact EOS technical support and we can get that added for you. The next thing I'm going to set in EOS Tools Pro is my RTK connection. To do this, I'm going to navigate using the bottom navigation menu. Right now I'm in status and I'm going to tap differential. In differential is where I would add my RTK credentials. They're already in here. I've got my connection info. So my protocol, my IP address, the port, my login credentials, and then the mount point that I've selected in that RTK network. These were provided to me by my RTK network provider. If you're unsure of what to enter in here, contact your RTK network provider. If you don't yet have an RTK network provider, reach out to your EOS representative or our technical support team and we can help you find the best local RTK network for your field work. I'm gonna click Start Streaming. Now, currently it's connecting to my RTK network and it's gonna go from float to fixed. We're only going to proceed once we've got a fixed status, which we do. So the next thing I'm going to set in EOS Tools Pro, I'm gonna go back to the position page of EOS Tools Pro, and I want to enable and initialize my smart handle. To do this, I'm gonna tap the smart handle icon in the top right corner of the position tab. You'll see that it's currently grayed out. This means it's not enabled and it's not initialized. When I tap that icon, I launch the Scotty Smart Handle settings. To enable the Scotty Smart Handle, I'm simply going to toggle on that Smart Handle button. I'm enabled now. To initialize the Scotty Smart Handle, I'm simply going to perform the initialization movement. What this is, is a level figure eight motion with the Scotty Smart Handle. Simply make an initialization movement. It should quickly initialize. Now that I'm initialized, I'm going to choose my mode and go to ArcGIS Field Maps. In ArcGIS Field Maps, I want to set a couple of key settings. So to do this, I'm going to select my profile icon in the top left corner. And the first setting I want to set is location provider. So underneath the location fields, you're gonna see provider integrated. Tap that. This is telling ArcGIS field maps to read GPS coordinates from the receiver that's integrated into my smartphone. I don't want that. I want it to be reading the GNSS coordinates from my Scotty receiver. So I'm going to add my Scotty receiver as a location provider option. To do this, I, so I tap add in the top right corner and it can see my GNSS receiver, so I'm just gonna confirm that I want to add that. For antenna height, we're gonna leave this at zero. Always leave this at zero in field maps. 
I'm gonna select done. And now I can select my EOS positioning systems receiver as a location provider. In my case, I'm getting a pop-up notification that my location profile might be incompatible with the GNSS receiver that I've selected. That's no problem because location profile is actually the next setting that we're going to configure. So I'm gonna select okay and go back to my field map settings. The next setting I want to configure is my location profile. What I want to do in the location profile is essentially tell ArcGIS Field Maps how to read the coordinates coming in from my Scotty GNSS receiver. So I'm going to select Add a Location Profile. It's asking me for my GNSS coordinate system. This is the coordinate system that my RTK network is using. So the GNSS coordinate system that my RTK network is using is NAD 1983-2011. So I'm going to type that in. and I want the first one that comes up, so I'm gonna select that. Now that I've selected my GNSS coordinate system, it's asking me what my map coordinate system is. This is the coordinate system that my ArcGIS field maps map is using. So for me, this is WGS 1984. Web Mercator. and I'm gonna select Auxiliary Sphere. The next thing I'm being asked to select is my map extent. This is basically asking me where am I doing my field work today or in this map. So I'm gonna select the Chicago area as my map extent and tap next in the top right corner. The last thing that Field Maps is asking me to confirm is my datum transformation that I want to be using. Now, I want to be using the first one in this list here, so I'm gonna select that. If you're unsure about any of these settings, contact your GIS administrator, and they can help you identify the correct coordinate systems and datum transformation. Now, you'll notice that ArcGIS Field Maps is asking me to give this location profile a name. This is really helpful because I can give it a name and save the profile so that anytime I'm using this RTK network in this area, I can easily and quickly select the same datum transformation. I'm gonna call this Field Demo and select Save. Now, from my list of available location profiles, I can select Field Demo and go back. So the third setting that you want to set in ArcGIS Field Maps, only when you're using Extensible, is in the Collection Settings. So I'm gonna tap this Collection Settings to open up that group. And the one that I want to focus on is GPS Averaging. You'll notice that it defaults to be set off. I'm gonna tap into that setting, I'm gonna to toggle on GPS Averaging, and I want exactly two points to average. So it does default to two, I'm gonna leave it at that, and I'm gonna back out of this setting. Those are all of the settings in ArcGIS Field Maps that we need to set to be able to proceed with capturing a point using the extensible mode. Now that all of our settings are configured in both apps, we're ready to do our field work. Today, we're gonna to be working with a pipe and a trench. Now, I don't have a pipe and a trench, so we're going to imagine one here. Because we're using the Scotty Smart Handle in extensible mode, I'm going to be able to map this asset without having to go into the trench myself. This is great because I don't need to spend time going into the trench, I don't need to risk my safety by going into the trench, and I don't need to be certified to go into the trench. So this is phenomenal for efficiency and safety. Now I'm back in EOS Tools Pro in the positions page, and I wanna point out once again those coordinates 
In that first column, remember that the GNSS coordinates represent the X, Y, and Z at my antenna, whereas the compensated coordinates are going to represent wherever this green laser is pointing when I'm pressing and holding the trigger. Right now, my compensated coordinates are red because I'm not pressing and holding the trigger. I'm only going to be sending location data to field maps when the trigger is pressed and held. So to demonstrate this really quickly, I'm just gonna show you when I press and hold the trigger, that compensated coordinate value is gonna turn black and I've, I'm now calculating the position of that green laser pointer. When I release the trigger, like now, those compensated coordinates turn back to red. So let's go into field maps and see what this actually looks like when I'm collecting data. So I'm going to launch field maps and I'm going to go through the workflow of collecting a point in extensible mode. And the first thing I want to point out is that at the very top of the map, you're going to see either GPS location not available or device connecting. This is perfectly normal and it's what we expect to see. The first thing I'm going to do is wake up field maps. And this tells field maps it's going to be receiving location data from the receiver. To do this, I'm going to just press and hold the trigger and tap that grayed out arrow. As soon as that arrow in the top right of the map turns from gray to blue, we've woken up the receiver. I can see that my GPS accuracy is sub inch. It's exactly what we want to see. Now the next step is I'm just going to, without regard for aiming at this point, I'm going to tap the blue plus button in the bottom corner and I'm going to select the type of feature I want to capture. Today we've got a pipe fitting, so I'm going to select the pipe fitting feature. Now I'm ready to aim at my pipe fitting and I'm going to press and hold the trigger for our two seconds that we're GPS averaging. After two seconds, it's captured that point and I'm going to submit it to ArcGIS Field Maps. So I tap the submit button and we're good to go. Let's take one more point. So now we're ready to capture our second point in field maps. Now to do this, remember, we're gonna tap that blue plus button in the bottom right corner and select the type of feature we want to capture. I'm gonna go with another pipe fitting. Now we're ready to aim at our asset and press and hold the trigger. So I'm pressing and holding for our two seconds of GPS averaging and getting that haptic feedback with the vibrations. And our point, we've already got it in field maps. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit that point. And now we've got our two points that we've captured in field maps without having to get into this trench. Now this is how you capture data using the Scotty Smart Handle in extensible virtual range pool mode with ArcGIS field maps. For related videos, click the link to the playlist on the screen or in the description.